When I saw this video come up in my YouTube recommended, I was very curious because I've always recommended cracking the coding interview and that's the book that I used when I was preparing for coding interviews. So let's take a look at this video and see what he has to say. I really hate this book, Cracking the Coding Interview. This really is seen as like the Bible for software engineering interviews. It's seen as something that every software engineer needs to own, but I feel like it's been really outclassed in the past few years. And it's not really because I hate these questions or these interviews, but it's because this book, even though it's a pretty good question bank, it's horrible for a beginner and teaching the fundamentals. I'll divide this into three sections to explain my reasoning and alternatives for each. Before we even get into the specific reasons, I 100% agree that Cracking the Coding Interview has gotten outclassed by many of the other resources out there. Back when Cracking the Coding interview came out, there weren't very many other resources, and now there are so many choices for you to choose from. There are websites with thousands of practice problems like Leak Code and Algo Expert. There's online programs like our Coding Interview Mastery Program, or any of the countless courses on Coursera on data structures and algorithms, or even specifically how to prepare for your coding interviews. And more broadly, there are just so many options now that go beyond books, right? Technology is at a point where there's so many ways to learn that are so much more effective. The first one is that it's just really hard to learn from cracking the coding interview. Look at this chapter trying to teach you trees and graphs. Graphs and trees are some of the most complex, the most fundamental data structures of computer science. And trees are so important and so commonly asked during interviews that you can almost guarantee to see them in like 90% of them. So this chapter covers five things that could literally be their own chapter each. Trees, heaps, binary search trees, graphs, and all the algorithms associated with them. They present them as a very basic introduction to these concepts. But imagine you knew nothing about these topics at all. Is skimming this summary enough for you to learn the basics and the concepts? It's like six pages long, and each of these concepts could be their own chapter. I didn't even know what heaps were until they showed up in a leak code question. I think you get my point. There's other examples of this in the book, but it's just not very beginner friendly at all. So this is definitely true. Cracking the coding interview is not designed to teach you data structures and algorithms. It's really more like a very in-depth study guide. So if you want to know what topics you need to know, Cracking the Coding Interview is a great resource to figure out what are those topics, but it's not going to teach you in-depth how to use them. The better alternative is, of course, elements of programming interviews in Python, but I cannot emphasize enough how much better of a book this is. So if you take a look at the book's explanation for trees, okay, it's not amazing, there's not examples, but there's a lot of detail here. And there's even a TLDR section that goes over some of the main things you just read for you to reference later. And most importantly, there's a separate chapter for binary trees, binary search trees, heaps, and graph, which is how it should be. Because even though these data structures are related, they all warrant their own chapter and own drill downs into their concepts. This is where I'm going to have to disagree and say, I did not find elements of programming interviews to be a very helpful way to learn data structures and algorithms. Yes, it covers a lot of different data structures, but in my experience, it goes into a very large amount of detail on the math and gets way more complicated than it needs to. There are lots of great courses out there on Coursera that you can go through for free that will teach you data structures and algorithms at the same level, but are much more comprehensible and give you a lot more exercises that you can actually implement using those tools. This is also something that we go into in depth in Coding Interview Mastery, where we take you through specific exercises for how to use each data structure so that you know how to use them and can actually apply them in your interview. So the second thing is that the questions in this book are good, but the answers are just way too wordy sometimes. This goes back to my advice to only interview in Python and never in any other language. Okay, hold on. If you are not a Python developer, do not do interviews in Python. I know what he's going to say. He's going to say, Python code is shorter. There's a lot more built-in tools that we can use. And while those are true, the problem with doing that is that if you go into your interview and you are not a Python developer, you're going to spend all this time trying to remember what is the Python syntax rather than being able to actually figure out how to solve the problem in the right way in your interview. You're going to spend all this time being distracted using all this brain power for something that if you used a language that you were familiar with, you wouldn't have to do. In your interview, the thing that's going to take you longest is not literally writing out your code, but it's coming up with what to write in the first place. And if you use the language that you are most comfortable with, you are going to be much faster at doing that than if you try and use a language that you don't have a lot of familiarity with. Look at this question here, which is a very similar question in CTCI and in EPI, but the answer is so long in the first one. Imagine writing all this on a whiteboard. Do you think you have enough space in an hour under pressure? Again, the key point here is that you have to do it under pressure. And when you're under pressure, you want to do the thing that is going to come most naturally to you. There's an expression with runners that says you don't change your shoes on race day. And what that means is that you want to train the same way that you're going to go into your interview. You want to have that experience of doing things so that when you're under pressure in that race, in that interview, you're doing things the same way as you were doing them before. And that's why in your interview, use the language that you're most familiar with. 
Look at the EPI solution. It's much shorter and much easier to write if you are writing this on a whiteboard or even just typing it out on a screen. And the best part about the chapters of EPI is that they introduce one concept and they build up through the questions from easy ones to much, much more involved ones. So you're learning the concepts one step at a time. On a side note, this is a pretty big nitpick. The solutions in EPI are right after the question, which is much appreciated because now you don't have to go and flip to the back of the book like it is in the CTCI book. It's just one more little thing that will save you time. So the third thing is being able to check your work. So I understand that CTCI was written in 2008 and LeetCode was created in 2015. So at the time, I'm sure that CTCI was amazing, but it's now 2022 and these interviews are harder than ever. So we need better and more efficient ways to check the answers to our solution. Because a lot of times when we're writing code for these solutions, they might not look exactly how they look in the book. And now you have to do some comparison work between your solution and the one in the book. One hour later. Whatever. It just takes more time than it needs. This is a trap that I see a lot of people fall into where they're focused on how do I do things as fast as possible, right? How do I write my code as fast as possible? How do I check my solution as fast as possible? And while that's really good for getting volume of practice in, it actually prevents you from retaining as much as you go through that practice. One of the best exercises that you can do is to say, look at your code compared to the code in the book and see how are they the same and how are they different? Look at why they're different. Actually figure out, is my code correct? And if it's not, what do I have to do differently? Rather than just running your code on leap code with a bunch of test cases and having it tell you whether you're right or not and tell you if it's wrong, what was the test case that didn't work? Having to go through that process of figuring it out on your own is going to help you to ingrain that material in a much deeper way. You can actually solve way fewer problems, but you're getting more out of them. So taking that extra time, even though yes, it is slower, is going to be more valuable for you in the long run because you're going to retain that information better. So in CTCI, to verify your work, you can create your own test cases if you want, but now you're just wasting unnecessary time. You can also go online and research the answers, but again, you're wasting time that you could be doing on other things. And again, the better alternative is this book. Why? Because they have an offline grader you can download. You can write, run, and do every single question in this book offline. And let me tell you how useful that is. The first time I bought this book and I downloaded the online grader, I realized I should have just done this from the beginning. People always ask me why Python is better than Java or other languages for interviews. And my answer is, look at this very simple question. This is two sum, a very common question. I think it's literally number one on leak code. And look at the character difference between the Java and the Python code. Okay, so you might be thinking, that doesn't matter. I type 151 words per minute. In the pressure of an interview, literally every second will count. Yeah, to go back to what we were talking about earlier, every second does count. But what he's not taking into account here is that if you are using a language that you are less familiar with, you will type slower. It'll take you more time to figure out what is the syntax for doing that thing. And so even if a language is more verbose, it's not just the character count, but it's how long it takes you to come up with what to write. If you think about it, imagine speaking in a language that you only know a little bit, right? Like I studied French in high school. So I can speak in French, but I can't speak nearly as fast in French as I speak in English. Even if French were a more concise language and I could convey more with less words, it wouldn't be faster for me to speak in French because I don't understand how to speak French as well. It takes extra mental processes for me to get to the point of expressing what it is that I wanted to say. The parallel I can give is of professional athletes. These are the ones that are so good at what they do that they spend literally years, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on trainers, nutrition, and all that stuff just to be 1% better than their competition. So anything that can make you 1% better is gonna give you an edge over other people. And let me ask, have you ever written code into a word processor before? Well, sometimes that happens. And if it does, you'll be happy you used Python. The other thing is the library. So Java has a pretty good standard library, but what about other languages like JavaScript? What if you're doing an online programming assessment and you need a heap? Well, JavaScript doesn't have a heap library. So now you're gonna have to implement your own. And yes, you could tell the interviewer to assume that you have a working heap library or something and it probably will be fine but a lot of times the interviewer will want you to run code and pass test cases on the spot and even worse a lot of companies are switching to online assessments because they have so many applicants that doesn't require a human at all it just grades you like how leetcode does and you have to pass test cases and in python there's a library you can import for all this heaps in javascript are the only case where i've actually seen this be an issue with every other language and with basically every other data structure there exists a standard implementation for it heaps in javascript are the exception but there are a couple ways that you can get around this one is to just have a standard implementation that you could copy paste in, in the case that you need to run your code. You can tell your interviewer, hey, I've already coded this up and I have this so that it'll save me time. The other thing to realize is that you can implement a heap very simply with about four lines of code. Because a heap is just an interface. All a heap is, is a sorted data structure that implements a push and a pop functionality. right? And you can do this without actually implementing a heap in the way that we normally think about it. Because it's an interface, you can just implement that on the back end with an array and sort the array every time you add or remove an element from it. Obviously, that's not going to be super efficient, but if you just need to run your code, and again, to his point, you say to your interviewer, hey, I'm going to assume that I have a heap implementation, but to get my code to run, I'm just going to write this quickly on the side. 
that's an easy way to get around that. Even though I still hate these interviews, like many of you, I still want to make this process as easy as possible. And let me know if there's anything software related you want me to talk about. All right, so overall, totally agree with the conclusion here. Cracking the coding interview is fairly outdated at this point, and there are lots of better resources out there. For example, if you want to learn more about how we work with students to help them take their interviewing to the next level, you can go to bitebybyte.com slash training to watch our free training on how we coach students. The key to preparing for interviews and really getting to a level where you can be truly successful is to find something that works for you. You may find that cracking the coding interview works great for you. You may find that you want to go through an actual structured program. You may find that going through leak code problems works, but the key is to find something that works and stick to it. If you want to see how to put together a plan for your interview prep, go ahead and check out this video and I'll see you in the next one.